have a brand new spoiler board on the CNC router, but it's kind of useless at the moment because I don't have any clamping accessories for it yet, so I'm making some in this video. Basically, I'm going to make this kind of clamp again with a stair ramp that fits the end of the clamp and you screw it down with the screw. And these are the ones from my old spoiler board of the old CNC router. Back when I made them, I wanted to be sure to be able to clamp anything, but over the years it turned out I really never used this one. I never used these two ramps and I never used this screw length. So yeah, that's pretty much all I need. And also since I now have slots instead of a grid of threaded holes, I have a few much, much better ideas. I now not only have slots in the CNC table, but I also created some in the spoil board itself by making it out of multiple strips and cutting away some material to create the slot. The reason for that are these kind of T-Track nuts that you can just buy as standard hardware and they fit anywhere into the slot and will rotate in there and then you can tighten down on them. That's a pretty cool system which I wanted to use for the spoil board for clamping. But the problem with them is that they don't really always work, sometimes just spin there. And you also don't have a lot of range because the screw bottoms out pretty quickly or as deep as the slot is. And that would mean I would need a lot of different screw lengths to clamp down on different workpiece thicknesses. But I really like this concept. I would just need a version of this that works a lot better and has more travel. So I went to the 3D printer and made a prototype. Here at this test slot, you can see how it works. The idea is that you can just slide it in and when you start tightening, the nut will automatically rotate and then get locked. And then you can tighten down. And when you open it, the nut will also automatically rotate back until it's straight again and you can just pull it out. The other parts of the nut prevent it from spinning when you tighten on it. And this upper part here keeps it straight when you want to pull it out. I also made it so you don't turn it a full 90 degrees until it blocks because that would make it jam in the slot as you can see with this test piece here. And if it gets jammed in the slot you can't turn it back easily and have trouble getting it out again. The slot of course needs to be big enough so the nut can fit through. And when it's sent down and rotated in clamping position it's just barely bigger than the slot. And that unfortunately means that the clamping forces have to be taken by this thin part of the 3D print and that of course started to fail. I really needed a steel part to take the clamping forces but unfortunately I couldn't fit a washer into this already really thin print. So that didn't work but then I eventually came across these type of t track nuts. And they are perfect because they are thinner and longer than a regular nut. That means I can make the slot thinner and a steel part takes the clamping forces. Although now the wooden part gets quite thin, so now probably the wood will fail. But there also exists a longer version of these and yeah, they are my way to go. Next then I needed to make a holder where this nut can fit into, similar to this one. And the final version I came up with looks pretty identical, but is better in every way. You slide it into one side, then press down on the other side where it will snap in place and be held in place. And even better, when you then thread in a screw, you can even push on it and it won't come out anymore. It's impossible. The slots I've shown earlier are of course now made for this piece here. And as you can see, it works just as the test and works fine. And also the slot in the wood is a bit bigger than the one in the aluminum extrusions. And that means that you can't accidentally hit the wrong slot. And travel wise, this is now the range that you've got. Next knob for the bolt head. On the old version, I made a knob with three spokes or however you call them. Quite small in diameter and too thin. It wasn't really that comfortable and great to use it. So the new version now only has two spokes, a better shape, bigger in diameter and a lot thicker, much easier to turn. Also, it has two embedded magnets inside it, which hold the washer in place. Printing consistent and perfect fitting two millimeter holes is more or less impossible, so I rather make them undersized and then drill them out. 
My way of installing such tiny magnets is to put them onto a washer and with the washer I can press them in place. The hex part in the print is just slightly undersized for the M6 bolt I'm using and by doing that and tightening it down once it won't come out anymore. I will have different lengths of this for different workpiece thicknesses but for now first improvement done on to the next one. Next are the clamps. An example of previously using them would be I take a clamp, put it on the workpiece, take a stair and thread it down. And then for whatever reason I noticed I couldn't use this length, I need a longer one or the shorter one. So I needed to thread all the way back out, switch it out and then thread all the way back in. A lot of unnecessary threading. So why not just make them open-ended, let the slots go all the way through and that way I wouldn't have to deal with that. Yeah, that's my solution. I will cut them with the CNC router and during some tests I already figured out that I was too aggressive. My toolpath ended up with a lot of tear out, then a pretty good result and then a very good result. This is the toolpath I'm going to use. I prepared some blanks the right thickness out of ash wood and already have some marks on my spoil board where I can now visually line that up. For this job this is good enough. Here I could already use the new T-Track nuts and they work great. The pieces are cut, now I need to remove the parts where I clamped on and then sand to the final dimension. I also made a guide that helps me with the sanding, here it's pretty obvious, it's this cut here and on the other side there's a very shallow cut which makes this line and I need to sand up to this line. I then also sanded the front a bit round to make them look a bit better. Finally some hand sanding to get rid of all the burrs and break the edges. One problem with the open design is that it can break more or less easily in the front if you bend it too hard. I'm reinforcing that part by cutting a slot into there and then gluing some cross grain into that. This now was supposed to be an outtake but it's too good to show it at the end. Nah, shit. Shit. Surprisingly more difficult than I expected. Very convenient clamping situation when the slot holds the clamp. This improvement is now also done. A problem that I sometimes ran into with the ramps is when I needed to clamp something relatively tall and from a distance I couldn't reach it because the ramp was hitting the screw down there. So the easy solution to that would be to just put a slot into the ramp so it can fit around the screw. That would be the first improvement and the second improvement would be the ramp has the same function and height from this and this orientation. So why not make it extend here a little bit so when you flip it this way it sits a bit higher and then you can use it for thicker pieces. And well, there are the improvements that I've done.
So then I designed such a ramp and created a toolpath for that and was basically ready to cut it out. And then I actually noticed it would be a much better part for printing. So during recording the rest of this video, I let the 3D printer do the work and now here is the finished ramp. As you can see it now has the slots so it can fit around the screw. And you can tilt it up for thicker pieces. And in this orientation it also has a slot to fit around the screw. And as you can see, I can now clamp this thickness from quite a distance without a problem. And now it's finished. I made six of everything and four different screw lengths with the range of 0 to 8 millimeters, 5 to 16, 15 to 26 and 25 to 36 millimeters. I will probably have them stored in some labeled boxes where their thickness range is written onto. So then when I have a workpiece, I only need to know the rough thickness, can select the right screw and clamp it down. The clamping part isn't much different from the version before. But removing the clamps now is just quick. And an example for a thicker workpiece. And as you already could see, the idea is that this stays assembled at all times so that I'm still that flexible with a minimum amount of loose parts. And you could also expand the system for even thicker pieces by just using longer bolts. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good system now. But one problem I can see though is with the T-Tracks now just being made out of wood, especially MDF, I don't know how well they will hold up over time with that clamping. So maybe plywood would be a better choice in that case, but plywood is not such a great material to flatten, so it gives a nice and smooth surface. Therefore MDF is perfect and cheap. So an alternative material I think could be something like this. This is a polyethylene sheet. But the problem there is it's kind of slippery and it's crazy expensive and I don't really think worth it for this. So I will try MDF and see where that goes. I will provide a link for a free download of the files of my 3D prints, so you can make that yourself if you want to. Very convenient clamping situation. <clears throat> Very convenient clamping situation.